Hi, this is Glenda, and as you can see today, I'll be making a soap inspired in one of my favorite books and movie. I am using, of course, goggles to protect my eyes, and this is the recipe. I will put a link to this recipe in the description box in case you're curious to see what the oils are. I have warmed them up and they are at 99 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. In this other container I have the light water solution which is distilled water with sodium hydroxide. And I mixed them several days ago so they are at room temperature which for me is 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. I will be adding sodium lactate uh, two teaspoons to the light water solution. This is just to help on molding and cutting it um, sooner rather than later because the silicone mold that I will be using creates a airtight seal. So it's really, uh, it takes a while for it to harden on its own. I've added the light water solution to the oils and I'm just going to stir them with a spatula for a while before adding the stick blender. The fragrance that I will be using is red currant and thyme tea fragrance. This is from New Direction Aromatics and I chose it because it does have a strong notes of tea. And for me it seemed like it went really well with this soap. So I'm now using the stick blender and I'm going to blend briefly for about maybe 10-15 seconds at a time and then I'm going to stir it and then keep blending for about a minute until I feel it has reach either emulsion or light trace. Before making the soap, I did blend some titanium dioxide with some light color oils and this is so that the soap will be white. However, I also mixed some black oxide powder with oils in a different container because I do want some portion of it to be black. The idea that I have is to make a soap that looks like marble. And the purpose behind that was to give the field of Pemberley a figure or a thought that marble might be a material used there, being a luxurious home, the home of uh, Mr. Darcy. However, I underestimated how strong black oxide pigment is and I think I use more than I needed to and you will see in the end what I mean by this. I am adding the fragrance to the main body of the soap. It has a very small amount of vanillin so I do not think it's going to discolor uh, to brown and I can tell you now that it has not and it's been a few weeks since I made it. This is my first time working with this fragrance, so I do not know how it behaves with my recipe. So I'm being careful and just stirring it with a spatula and monitoring the temperature to see if it has any signs of accelerating or getting too thick too fast. Here I blended the black oxide pigment and I sort of regretted doing it because I still had not added the titanium dioxide to my main mix uh, and I didn't want the leftover soap on the blender to dirty what's supposed to be white so I did have to clean it and rinse it before trying to distribute the titanium dioxide into the rest of the butter. I also think that I made too much of the black portion and I ended up not using all of it because I felt that it tend to overpower the white rather quickly but um, for now I'm just blending it and my idea was to get it to a thick trace thinking that maybe if it is a thick trace and then the black is very thin it will create that marble effect. However, the black oxide was actually causing that black portion to be quite thick. So quite the opposite of what I wanted happen. My white portion was very um, fluid and then the black was very thick. So I added a little bit and then I tried to distribute it with the spatula and start adding it to the mold. And I'm not, at this point is when I start seeing that there is a lot of black and it's 
probably because most of it just stay on the top of the soap. So I added it, the rest of the white from a high distance to make sure that the white was going to the bottom of the mold. And since I was not using all of the black, my mold was not quite full, so I used the remaining white portion that I had to try to fill it. Ideally, I was going to put just the white on top so that the embeds will make a nice contrast, but I didn't. I decided having some gray in it will be fine. The embeds are a book and then a top hat. The book is to represent Elizabeth, which is uh, the main character of the book, along with Mr. Darcy, which is the um, represented by the hat. These embeds are made with soap dough or soap clay. It's just moldable soap. And I made them a while back, so I'm really happy to finally be able to use them, to finally be able to make this soap, because I have been thinking about making it since before Christmas. And in preparation for that, I decided to watch again the movies that I have and also another movie that I found in YouTube of a different version that I hadn't seen before. And I also read the story behind the making of some of the movies. I wrote about this more in the blog post, which if you care to read, will be linked in the description box below. Now back to the soap. It's been a couple days and it looks like it's ready to come out of the mold and I'm pushing it, at least from the sides, it was releasing easily, but from the bottom, it was, um, I was having a hard time releasing and breaking the air seal. So I think that next time what I'm going to do is that I'm going to freeze it just to be able to remove it from the mold without damaging the soap and then I'm gonna let it thaw out before cutting it. That seems to have been working with other soaps made with this recipe. This recipe has a little bit more of olive oils, which has helped in making the batter more fluid, uh, but it does have the drawback that it takes a little bit longer to harden up. This is the sketch I had for the soap. So now you can see how it actually looks. It has a lot more black than I wanted it to have, and I did change the position of the embeds. Instead of putting them on the face of the soap, I put them on top because I have plans for the front of the soap, as you will see next. So the very next stage, I plain the soap, and my idea is to add um, some stenciling on it, like the one that you see on the left there, similar to what I did for the Snow White soap. And in reality, I should have waited longer uh, to do this because fresh soap will always stick to soap that's already cured. So I'm not really sure what my rush was. And I'm using the black soap, the leftover one that I didn't use. And this one is still going through the saponification process. So it's still quite fresh. And if anything, I should have worn gloves because it was a little stingy or or is it stingy? I'm not sure, but there was a minor irritation from handling uh, this black soap too. Nothing really bad, but um, I should have worn gloves regardless. So what I'm doing is just using a stencil that I cut with vinyl, and then I'm applying the uh, soft soap or the soap dough on it, and then peeling off the rest of the vinyl to reveal the silhouettes of them. Now, this one is my favorite because it's the profiles of Kiara Knightley and, and Matthew McFadden. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, they are the actors from the 2005 film, which is one of my favorites. Uh, however, this one I'm just gonna keep for myself and then the other ones that have the generic figures is the ones that I'm going to um, give away or sell. To cut these stencils, I use a silhouette machine, which I originally got that machine for scrapbooking, uh, but it has come very handy even for some soap making things like this. 
Now, this one silhouette, I thought it was funny because what are they doing? Why are they holding hands and looking away? I'm not sure, but I liked it because of the silhouette of the dress. It follows into the silhouette from the Regency period of the height, waisted dresses. So I try to stick with that period primarily. I do thank you for joining me in this video. I hope to see you next time and I bid you goodbye.